Welcome to the Americana Beef. Welcome to the Americana Beef for Girl. I'm your host, Roberto Alvarez Gayoso, serving you the best. Serving you the best in Americana music. True rock and true country music. Many people have said that rock and roll is dead. Even the rock group from New Mexico, Gleewood, even once said it. But let's face it, rock and roll is alive and kicking. And it is alive and kicking in, in one of the greatest personalities that has come from Canada. I hear her and it's like hearing Pat Benatar, Chrissy Hind of the, um, Chrissy Hind, and all others like, um, like Fleetwood Mac, Stevie Nicks. I have none other than Sabrina Fala. As soon as I could get her in the program. Oh, we also have a segment with Dr. Rob, but he'll be coming later. Okay, I just invited Sabrina. Please come in, Sabrina. Come in. Okay, we're coming in and come in and come in and come in. Come one, come all, come three times. I'm dedicating this song and this interview to one of my main men, 3RG Miami, Instant Karma, and, uh, and the dropouts. And of course, I'm also dedicating this to Salty Sam and Midnight Kahuna. Oh, yes. And of course, we cannot forget. Uh, thank you, Rebecca Isabel. Also, we cannot forget this cartoon character given, drawn by me, by the famous Reynold de Cuba. You can, if you, if, you have, if you have diplomatic relations with Cuba or, know, or go to Cuba, ask for Reynold de Cuba and he will gladly give you none other than a great, a great caricature. I have here S Sabrina Fala. I've been dying to have interview with her. Really, 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 really great. I, lo I love her music. You can, you can hear me fine? Oh, of course I can hear you. Awesome. I want to congratulate you also on your beauty. The true rocker. Thank you. But we're going to get started. Sabrina, how did you get started in the um, in rock and roll? <laughs> well, I have a green day to thank for that because when I heard the American Idiot album, that's when I knew I wanted to be a rock singer. So if I didn't hear that record, I don't know what kind of singer I would be. So, but they're my heroes, they're my influence, they inspire me. As you can see, they're behind me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I also have a lot of rock idols myself in English and Spanish. I can count, I love Eagles, I love Fleetwood Mac. I also have one great, I also have, I also have uh, in addition to Eagles and Fleetwood Mac, there are also many Spanish rock groups that I love. Of yesterday and today, Juanes was one that I love. And uh, the other ones. Mm -hmm. From the 60s and 70s, Los Tres Suramericanos, Los Avaloyas, those are like the really big ones in Spain. And of course, I love some of my local rock groups like 3RG Miami. Here's, okay. here's the nice. 3RG Miami. Nice. And also, also, nice. Mid, also Midnight Cajuna, and in addition to Midnight Cajuna, uh, the Dropouts and um, Instant Karma. Okay. And some other and some other local rock groups, but and of course I have one great favorite right now. She's talking to me. <laughs> oh, you're sweet. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not saying it. To, I'm not saying it to be, you know, to please or anything. I'm just saying because it's the truth. And one of the songs that really got me to your music. All of them got me. I loved your video of the front line. I loved your video of the okay. front line. Okay. But, but really, but before we talk about Frontline, there was one that really got my heart. Breakthrough. Breakthrough. Yeah, my, my opinion of Breakthrough, correct me if I'm wrong. I heard the rhythm. The rhythm, okay. it, the rhythm reminded me of my trips from here, to my, from here in Miami to Key West. And really? also remind, it also reminded me of another favorite rocker called Nila Nilara. But um, oh, breakthrough I, reminded me of so, one, break breakthrough reminded me of something called freedom. How what, what inspired you to do breakthrough, and who did you dedicate breakthrough to? I 
actually breakthrough is about me. <laughs> um, I wrote it when I was very young, and I was trying to break through my fears and I mean, like facing my, my fears and building up confidence and believing in myself. So I wrote that song because I, I go through a lot, and uh, I wanted to help people to so when they hear this song that they can break through it and get to, to their goals and. And, and you always need to believe in yourself as well to build confidence. So mm -hmm. you have to believe in yourself first mm -hmm. before you can build up the confidence. And I'm still building up confidence because being in this industry is not easy every day. So I know. I'm still trying to stay strong and, you know, but I'm better now. But when I was younger, I was very shy. I was still trying to figure things out. So I wrote that song actually to help myself. As I was writing it, I was helping myself with it. Yeah, so that song is really close to my heart. So I I'm glad you liked it. Yeah, it's, um, it's also yeah. close to my heart too because uh, we live in, uh, I, I don't, we probably have the same thing. Um, I'm, I'm even, I was born in Ohio and my family, we're all Latin, we're all Cuban. And um, right now, here in America and in other parts of the world, there are many people yearning for freedom and some others who are actually laughing at freedom and even right now there are many who are looking for freedom and that song that I heard there are many ways to define freedom yes the definition was the definition for some people is politics I could care less about politics yeah, no, no politics. I don't like talking about politics. I don't like either, but yeah. I do it. But I did want to bring up that it brought up. That, but I did want to bring up one beautiful thing. And freedom means you're free to do what you want. Right. And that you are free to have your own destiny. Right. And be accepted for what you are also, and accept others. That was the freedom I was yeah. thinking about. The other freedom I was thinking about was driving from. Miami to Key West, which is uh, now, we're, we're trying to solve that problem, but that'll, that'll pan itself out. But I love the song Breakthrough. Mm. Oh, and um, thank you. I also love the song The Frontline. Your video, your video, <laughs> your video was excellent. Thank you. I, I, it was, uh, I did it, I filmed that video in one day in my heels after I decided to never wear heels again. <laughs> but I, it was painful, but it was a great experience. Um, yeah. yeah. So so worth it. So worth it. Yeah. I, I, did, I didn't, I was afraid that you would, you would, I don't, I wouldn't wear heels at the beach or at the, uh, or, or at the, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, or even at the, at, or even at the uh, dock. Well, at the skate park was the hardest because they had for the, Skateboards, the, the you know the bridge or the, the skateboard rig or whatever you call those things. But going up and down in the heels, I almost had to crawl. But I went I went sideways, not frontwards. I, I went down sideways. Oh my god, my mom had to help me because I was on the <laughs> But it, it was an adventure, definitely. Yeah, uh, it was great. I don't rec I don't recommend doing videos in high heels. Not in a skate park. <laughs> and, and the thing is, I didn't want to take them off and change into sneakers because it will take me so long to take them off and put them back on. Mm -hmm. It will be, be a waste of time when we wanted to do things fastly and move on mm -hmm. to, to the next. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which means, it leads, to other, it leads me to another question. There was another song that I liked. <laughs> All or Nothing. Ah. Uh, the party song. Yes. That's going to Montreal. Yeah. <laughs> that that yeah. party. That one is just a song about going to a party and having fun. I wanted a party song. That's the party song. Yeah. It reminded me. Of, it reminded me of some of the wild parties that I had went to in Miami a long, long time ago, in my first youth. Plus some of the wild parties I had when I was in the American School of Venezuela. Oh. Yeah, but I don't want to enter, I don't want to go into that detail because we want to say, <laughs> no, I don't want to. <laughs> I just want to in, in, go into detail into your music. Right. You have the, you have music influences like Green Day, Bon Jovi, and Billy Idol. Mm -hmm. 
What did you learn from them? What did you learn? What did you learn from their music? What did you learn from their music? To have I've been asked that. <laughs> no. Well, what did you learn from their music to have a new influence called Sabrina Fala? <laughs> well, Green Day pretty much made me who I am because I look at them as someone I can look up to and I follow them and I listen to their advice and I take it. Bon Jovi is. Oh, um, you know, I think they're all the same. Like. Their music, the way they are, they're tough. They don't take, you know, things from people. Um, they do what they want. They don't let people tell them. They, they don't listen. They do what they want to do. But um, my music is m more Green Day inspired. But recently, um, I've been told that some of my songs have a Billy Idol feel to it. So I'm glad they're hearing it. And my Bon Jovi song would be my song Hurt. It's very much like you want to make a memory kind of feel to it. So um, they've all helped me in different ways. But when I'm talking about the the one band is Green Day. That if I'm not if not if I'm not happy, I'll I'll listen to Green Day. Like Green Day is always gonna lift me up. But I love. I love a lot of bands, but there's something about Green Day that I always go back to. And yeah. they're number one to me. Yeah. And I've seen them live twice. Mm -hmm. They're very good live. They're very good. It's great. You um, you also um, work. Uh, let me see. You've also uh, worked. Actually, I see in you. The, med, the, the influence of Green Day, Bon Jovi, and Billy Idol, yet at the same time when I hear your voice, I hear a mixture of Chrissy Hind, of The Pretenders, alongside uh, alongside Pat Benatar. Okay, the, 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 the Pretenders was a new one, I've never heard that one. I get Pat Benatar, but how about Joan Jett? Joan Jett, you'll, you'll have you'll have a little bit of Joan Jett. I remember, who doesn't remember, who doesn't remember, who doesn't remember Joan Jett? <laughs> I liked it when she said, I love rock and roll. I love that song, yeah. I also liked it when she said about, I don't give a damn about my, about my bad reputation. I love that song so much. Yeah, I know, huh? Yeah. yeah. We also had some of our parties in, we also had some of our parties here in Miami. Some of our wild ones that I'm not, that I'm not going to go into. Because everybody's going <laughs> to, everybody's going to kill me. All right. But, as I said, it just went, we're just talking about you. And you only. All right. Okay. Which reminds me, you All worked right. with Chris Burkett, and Chris Burkett has worked with Peter Gabriel, Quincy mm -hmm. Jones, Buffy St. Marie, and mm -hmm. Sinead O'Connor. Yeah. What was it like yes. to work with Chris Burkett on your video, The Frontline? Oh, he didn't work on The Frontline with me. He did. He recorded the song with yeah, me. Yeah, it said you released, it, it, it released your single, The Frontline, but it, it's sort of like working with him because he helped you. He produced your album. Yes, he produced it, but he did make the video with me. But he right. did the song um, very, he, he did it pretty fast. Actually, he played the drums, the bass, and the guitar all himself. Because, you know, it, it's cheaper to get one person to do it than getting a band to do it, and then you pay for session and stuff. But he did it, and wow, you would not even believe it's just one person playing mm -hmm. the whole thing. And he mixed and mastered it, too. He's very good. He's a really nice guy. And the funny thing, funny thing is, when, when I first met him, I, I went to like a songwriters association group night, and I, the guy outside was tying his bike up to the pole, and, I, and, and we just were talking, and I'm like, I'm looking for a producer who can record rock, and then this guy just gave me the, his number, and then I called him. As soon as I called Chris, he said, sure, I'll, I'll squeeze you in. He's so busy, and he still squeezed me in to do, do some work with them. So, that's, no, yeah. th that's very great. And you also have a compilation CD, Sabrina Fala, which I hope to have in my hands soon. I'll, I'll probably buy it myself, but I hope to have it in my hands, and probably autographed by you too. <laughs> but um, <laughs> and you have all of these uh, songs uh, that we've already talked about. And um, one of them is Paradise Comes with a Price. What inspired yeah. you to do Paradise Comes with a Price? It's 
a song about depression, and uh, I wrote it for people that have hope not to let go, and that um, the light will shine, but you just have to stay strong. Because it, it is tough. It is tough in this world. This world is not very easy to live in. So I was actually thinking of um, Robin Williams yeah. while I was writing that song. And I was thinking about what, what, what do I think he was going through? And um, I just, I had to put myself in that state of mind to write that song. Mm-hmm. And it, it's not, and it's, it, sometimes when you write a song, you have to put yourself in that state to write, and it can be hard, but mm-hmm. to get the song out, I had to actually imagine that I was going through that to write it, and it came out pretty good. Like, uh, I, when I released it, some people came up to me and said that it helped them, and it's a good, it's a nice message, so I'm, I'm glad uh, some people could re- relate to it. And it helped them yeah. because it, it is tough out there. It is very tough. Yeah, I did hear the song Paradise Comes with a Price uh, because there have been times we all have had this, these problems. I've, I too have passed through these myself. And somehow I heard, parad- I heard Paradise Comes with a Price and it, re- it reminds me of what could have happened, what, what didn't happen, and how I saved myself. Exactly. And, uh, exactly. and and I want to thank you for having recorded that song and helping me through the darkest times, which has been uh, this last month when this last month when we've been going through a lot, which I don't want to, which I, I don't want to, I, I don't want to enter the. Everybody is going through yeah. something. I don't want to enter the details on this because you talked about Robin Williams. I want to, I just want to enter, call, talk about your career. But your no, song. I'm just saying during this time, I'm sure a lot of people are dealing with yeah. anxiety and. Stuff like that. Yeah. Your song of Paradise Comes with a Price, you said you wrote it with Robin Williams in mind. I heard it myself, but I also thought about another artist. He's not that well known. His son, Freddie Prince Jr., was well known, but Freddie Prince was a, a comedian, a native New Yorker. Uh, father was from Hungary, uh, mother was from Puerto Rico, and he was a big success in the 70s. Unfortunately, he was unable to deal with with such success, he would he, he, the, the pressure. He had the pressure, which led to depression, and he killed himself at 22 years of age. Oh, that's young. And he left. A, and he left a his he he left a, his wife was about to, ready to divorce him when he did that. He left a son called Freddie Prince Jr., who is now a big actor in Hollywood, but. Name. <clears throat> Freddie Prince Jr. was the one who did. Freddie, was, Freddie Prince Jr. was the uh, boyfriend of the uh, Sarah uh, Sarah uh, Geller of the uh, Va- Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Oh my God! Yes, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I have all the seasons. Like yeah, horrible. the a- <laughs> the the actress of Buffy the Vampire Slayer was the girlfriend of Freddie Prince Jr. So Sarah Michelle Geller. Sarah Michelle Geller, right? Thanks for for, for helping me. I didn't. Yeah, because rem- now, no, yes, that's where I heard the name. So yeah. that's who she's with. His friend, okay. his. I don't know if, if they're together, but her boy, her boyfriend at that time, I remember, was Freddie Prince Jr. Freddie Prince right. Jr. was the son of the comedian Freddie Prince, and Freddie Prince Jr. was about a month or two months old when his father decided to end it all at 22 years of age. That's sad, yeah. And um, I do remember the, I do remember Freddie Prince uh, Sr. I was, I, was fifth, I was 14 turning 15 when he decided to do himself. I mean, do himself that he killed himself. Right, I, yeah. And this song, Paradise Comes with a Price, reminded me of that. But it also reminded me how there's there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And I wanted to thank that's, you for that. That's the point. I wanted to have that in the song, that don't give up. Don't give up. Be strong. And it's helped me many, many times. And, and of course, the other song that I love, I saw the video, Kiss is a Killer. <laughs> 
what is meant by kiss is a killer. There are many people, many people have various definitions of kiss. One is the rock group. The number the one one kiss is the rock group. That's one definition. Oh. Yeah, but that's not what the song. The second uh, definition, <laughs> the second definition is the emotions. Okay, yeah. Of two people kissing. Yeah, that's that's getting close to it. Yeah. And uh, there are some people who look at it as, as good and beautiful because it's from family, from friends. Other people kiss their dogs and cats yeah. as a sign of, hello, how's everything? Yeah. And there are others who look at a kiss as really as a killer and some that is not acceptable. What did, what did you, how, what was the inspiration for you to write Kiss as a Killer and what is your definition? My definition to kiss and a kiss is a killer is that the kiss is a killer. Like the kiss is good. It's a great kiss. Like it's so good. It's like it, but by feet, the, the feeling is so good that it's oh my god. Like like it's to, it's to die for. You know. Like I want more kisses. But the the story behind it, I thought of the grease theme when the guys wear the leather jackets and the leather pants and they all act cool and you know they get they're popular and they go after the girls and they get the best kisses so but yeah it's kind of interesting that you're asking me the the meaning because at first when i first heard the title i thought it meant that the kiss actually killed you <laughs> no no the kiss but, but actually when i wrote it with the songwriter i'm like oh Good kiss, okay. Yeah, the, no, the kiss has never killed me, especially the ones that I get from my wife. No, but I'm just saying, because the kiss is a killer, the first thing that came into my head was, kills you? <laughs> yeah, you know, I didn't... It's just so, it's just funny. It's just funny that all these things come into your head and then you realize, no, it means that, you know? Yeah, no, I didn't mean like that. It was just, I was thinking about the different, the different definitions. Yeah. Of course, I do, I like the kisses, especially from my wife, my cat. The whole bit. Oh, I, I want a cat. <laughs> and of course, and of course, you already reminded. You already also brought up. You already there already stirred up some other memories that I'm not going to bring up about the leather pants and leather jackets. I miss those times. <laughs> and, but you have stuck up and didn't last. But what, what was meant by stuck up and didn't last? Pardon? You did record okay. two songs, stuck up and didn't last. Oh, yeah. Oh, do you want me to explain them? Explain the meanings. Okay. Um, for, for Stuck Up, I was writing a song and I was... Um, I, I, had, I had writer's block when I was writing that song because I had to write it fast. So I told myself I was stuck. <laughs> and then somehow Up came out of me and then I said Stuck Up. And I don't know anybody who stuck up. It just came out, so I wrote about it, and people are just thinking they know everything. Or stuck mm -hmm. up. Um, didn't last is not a, about anything about me in my life. It's we just I, I co-wrote it with someone, and we're just writing about a relationship that didn't last, mm -hmm. and that I stayed in the song that there's no way you would go back into that relationship or mm -hmm. give that person another chance. Because sometimes you give people chances, but sometimes they go too far and they don't even deserve mm -hmm. a second chance. Yeah, between you, between the, the both of us, I always give. I always I, I have a I have a baseball type rule. I always give people three chances. Even if they do something really bad? Yes, and then the third chance, forget it. I'm gonna, <laughs> I, I'm gonna, I don't, I, I, <laughs> I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give you an example. My current wife, she, I'm gonna make it brief because again, this is about you. I want this to okay. be about you. But um, my second wife was once my girlfriend my second wife was my girlfriend in the Dominican Republic when we studied medicine. We had great, very, very great memories, but unfortunately, since we didn't have the latest in, in uh, technology to keep, uh, to keep in touch, we drifted apart. There was no LinkedIn, no Facebook, no Twitter, no nothing. Yeah. She went to Puerto Rico, and she tried to do everything in medicine. I came here to the States and did everything in medicine. And um, I married, then I got kicked out of my house, 
and then she married and she got kicked out of her house and then somehow we managed to find each other and we gave each other a second chance but that's different that was probably you guys were meant to be together again mm -hmm. that's completely different and we whatever mistakes we may have made whatever mistakes we made we asked forgiveness and the whole bit and and we, but we found that we never made any mistakes. The thing was that we just simply disconnected. It happens, and then you just find each other again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but I have given three. I've given three chances. The third chance is forget it. There have been incidents. There have been incidents in which one or two chances, and then that was it. There was with someone who did something really bad to me. I said, forget it. Out. But mostly. Yeah. It, it, on the situation but mostly but mostly I give three chances and that's it I just simply it, um, I'm almost out of questions here in the, in the fact that I'm just enjoying the, I'm just enjoying the conversation yeah, but I think people are actually writing stuff yeah they are it's they're my fan there's it's your fan club everybody knows you in the in the states I, pr I promoted you all around. Uh, I promoted you all around. I'm sorry, guys. If I'm not answering your questions, I'll answer you after the video. Yeah, but don't worry. Right don't worry. I, I answer. I, I can't. I can't see. I, Sabrina. So Sabrina. Can't see. Sabrina. What I usually do is I interview the, the artist, and then after I finish the interview, I have a I have a list of all the people who visited, and I give them thanks and I refer them to you. Okay. Because we're not because we're not finished. Come over. <laughs> no, when I'm finished, they're gonna be buying your album, hopefully. Please. Because <laughs> your music is great, your videos are great. Yeah. Nobody can imitate them, which leads me to the next question. Okay. And then I'm gonna have a little surprise also. I have someone who wants to meet you. Is it a dog or a cat? I wish. I wish. <laughs> It's uh, okay. it's uh, it's someone who I it's someone who I know a long time ago. He always okay. he makes a lot of house calls. His name is Dr. Rob. Okay. But um, many people define rock and roll. They think rock and roll is on its way out. That rock and roll is dead. I personally don't think it's dead. I think it's alive. What is your take on rock and roll? <laughs> the way Green Day, Bon Jovi, and Billy Idol are still kicking it out there, and there's so many bands out there still going, rock and roll will never die. Just because right now in the center of the industry is all the exposure to certain people, there's so much talent out there, guys. You just have to go out and find it. Rock and roll is still alive. Like, like, um, just just to sh share something i am now on mainstream radio if rock and roll was dead my songs would not be on uh, played on the mainstream radio stations they yeah. are playing me like crazy right now because they're looking for new talent but they're still looking for new artists who are in the rock Mm -hmm. Hey, look at look at all those rock stations out there. They're still wanting unsigned rock bands. They want to hear the new generation of rock. You know? Which mainstream so, which, which mainstream and when, and when people tell me rock is dying, I'm like then why am I not dead? Why are people still listening to me if rock was dead? Why are people following me if rock was dead? Why is Green Day still successful if rock was dead? Because people are still following it. So. Yeah. Which leads to the which leads to the next question. You're not the only one who's on mainstream. This this big crisis that we've had for two months, I'm now being placed on mainstream. I was interviewed by the Buzz of L.A. Oh really? That's yeah. So cool. But that's but again, I want to leave the, go back to you. The so, the uh, <laughs> the uh, um, which mainstream radio stations have you been on? Oh my god. I can't memorize them all, man. Well, I know they're... But, 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 
I'll tell you the first one that played me that got me to get on all the other ones because that led me. So WSBS Radio in Massachusetts in the United States mm -hmm. was the first one that played me and interviewed me. And from that day, anywhere else I submitted, they accepted me. They, they, they gave me a chance and that helped me a lot. Yeah, I got. I, I managed to. Find, I managed to find, discover your music via Mike Leonard of KQED of uh, of North Dakota. KCEG, KC, right? right? KCEG, yeah. I have an interview with him on Monday on Facebook Live. You can tune in. I'm gonna tune in, and we're gonna be we're gonna be promoting you. And I'm gonna say something. You're. Well, I do have one other question. Okay. Before sure. I bring my, right. before I bring my, before I bring the other special guest, and then he'll, then I'll come back to say my goodbyes. But um, who is the? Uh, um, do you think we could see Sabrina Fala doing a concert in the Florida Keys or in Miami Beach? When everything settles down and then we, we can get back out, sure, why not? <laughs> We're in lockdown right now. You may be on lockdown, but I've already been do I've been inspired by you by breakthrough, and I'm not on lockdown. I'm what they call. No, I, no, I mean like I can't go out and perform. Oh yeah. You. Yeah, I'm. On, I'm, on, but, I'm. When I can travel, yes. Because right, right now I don't yeah. even know if you can even go into the airports just yet. Yep. Yeah. Right now, right now, what we're doing is promoting Sabrina Fala, so that when you come, we can. Yeah, could, yeah, we definitely. We give you a big an welcome. Opportunity there. Sure, why not? I'll go. And remember, even right, in, even in these times of crisis, if you have anything new or anything to say, please come to the Americana Bistro Grove. You have a home here in Miami. Awesome. You're one of the greatest. One minute. I think I'm, I'm, I think someone is coming here. Just one minute. Wait for one minute. Here. You're one of my greatest favorites. How's everything? <laughs> I'm from Volcano Club. I did the famous video. I did the famous video with Midnight Kahuna for rock and roll called uh, Once the Beauty, Now the Beast. It was so famous. They wanted to, oh they wanted to, they wanted to really, they really wanted to get to me. I don't know. I'm just here making house calls. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just here. There, I just simply wanted to meet you. I'm for, I, I had to, I had to convince Roberto Alvarez guy also to, because I wanted to meet you so much. You're such, you're, you're one of my favorites. I listen to you every time I make house calls on the on on, the, uh, on my car. I love your music. <laughs> Thank you. You showed me a lot. Well, I, uh, I think uh, I think Roberto Alvarez guy also just calling me. One minute, I'm getting yanked. Wow. Okay, that was Dr. Rob. Nice guy. Nice person. I love him a lot. I love him a lot, but he has a, he, he has one of those really erratic he sense of humor. Great. He's one of those people who have an erratic sense of humor. I recommend I recommend that you uh, see his video. Once the beauty, now the beast. I'm gonna send you the video. He's been like going after me, saying I want to see I want to meet Sabrina. I want to meet Sabrina. So, All right. And he got. I already got. He already got the. Already. Uh, he already met the. He already met you, and and everything else is great. I, I. I don't know. I just wanted to say something, Sabrina. It has been a pleasure and an honor having you with me. Thank you. I really enjoyed it. It was. It was awesome. And it was really. I wanted to. I will definitely come back when there's some new music or some more updates on what's going on and I will definitely be sharing that with you. Yeah, uh, I'm going to be sending you some of my material. I'm also, I'm also right now, if you see it, that I have a camera here, is that I'm recording the interview so that when we finish I'm going to place it on YouTube. Yeah. Given the fact that also YouTube, no comments, I might also make copies in other, in other mediums called like a bit shoot or Vimeo. Just in case. Okay, I, I, I don't know what those are, but okay. Cool. BitChute is, is another medium that in case YouTube fails me, I go to BitChute. Okay. All right. 
So if one fails, the other one fails. I always keep three, four copies of all of the interviews, especially the people, nice. especially of the people that I appreciate the most. Plus, plus in addition to you appreciating you the most, uh, uh, Sabrina, as what you're now, you're now, I'm now baptizing you as one of my favorite rockers. You're one of my favorite rock and roll singers. You mean in this generation? Of this generation and of all generations. Thank you. You're in the same league as for me, like Eagles, Fleetwood Mac. Okay, I, I know who Fleetwood Mac is. They're actually really good. Yeah, also yeah. Also others, like in the, in the Spanish world, Juanes, Los Tres Suramericanos. And of course, there's another group that I used to love a lot, the Monkees. You know what? I hear that name a lot, and I, I know. You know what? I have to go hear that band because a lot of people say I like the Monkees, and I'm like, I never go and check them out. I'm gonna go and check them. I'm gonna send you a video. I'm gonna send you a video of the Monkees. The monkey. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna give you a big brief history because I, I, I I'm not. I'm doing this for an hour, and I, and I, I, I don't want to say goodbye. I just want, if, I, if it were me, I would keep this forever, but I'm going to tell you who the monkeys were. After the Beatles were formed, a uh, group of record producers in RCA, uh, in RCA decided that they needed a rock group. And then there was, right. and then uh, uh, RCA, which was the owner of NBC, with right. NBC at that time was NBC. Not like now that it's all, ugh. <laughs> but NBC wanted a special called the Monkees because everybody was going crazy over the Beatles. And at that time, at that time, well, many people say you don't have you don't have a memory, but I do remember at three years old that everybody was forming rock groups. And at three years old, yes. and at three years old, I was filming and interviewing everybody. Unfortunately, nobody yes. understood me at that time. But at that time, there were groups like the Monkees in the Spain. There was Los Tres Suramericanos, Los Avaloyas. And there was also there was also Herman's Her, uh, Her, uh, Herman's uh, Herbert he, he, whatever. There was even other there was even another group in the in Spain.